So uh, we'll go on, uh, go ahead and start with the presentations um, uh, and I'll leave the floor to Federica Rossetti and uh, to Alain Denis. Thank you, uh, Lorenzo. And yes, I think we can we can skip this so and go straight because Lorenzo explained us the structure of uh, of today and go straight to an introduction on the on the project, which I have the pleasure to do, uh, and I will keep it very short. So Resistide is a RIA. It's a, a research and innovation action funded under Horizon Twenty Twenty. Uh, it is a project with 11 partners uh, spread over nine European countries and uh, has a duration of 30 months. It ends at the end of September. So as Lorenzo was saying, this is really one of the last activities of uh, public activities of the, of the project. The research activities have taken place in 31 countries. So the EU 27 and four associated countries. And the approach of the project is for a research project, I think has a number of innovative aspects. And uh, maybe we can go to the next slide uh, to share that, thank you. So you see here this chart on the right side of the slide, which explains um, the step-by-step uh, -step approach that, that we followed, where first of all, we did, let's call it traditional research, we mapped uh, for instance, policies uh, linked to COVID-19. Uh, we looked at the uh, quantitative impacts of these policies on inequalities, and we did qualitative research, which was mainly the collection of narratives and concretely more than 800 uh, individ individual interviews were collected uh, and analyzed. A lot of workshops, expert interviews, uh, were uh, executed also as part of these insights. These insights then led to co-creation. In total, we did 12 what we call open studios, which are long workshops, two-day workshops, where a diverse uh, group of people, uh, both from the consortium and from outside the consortium, um, analyze these results from the point of view of finding solutions solutions which we then developed. And um, concretely, there are three types of solutions. Uh, on the one hand, we launched pilot projects, which are essentially social innovations that we tested, prototyped and tested together with NGOs. Second, we developed policy recommendations, which took the form of fact sheets and which were um, pushed towards their audience. And last but not least, we uh, developed a research agendas, which identify the knowledge gaps. And today is a uh, webinar is part of these research agenda uh, activities where we identify research gap on health inequalities, which we want to share with researchers and research funders to uh, initiate further research. All this is to provide evidence to empower policymakers and research funders, so we, we try to have an impact with uh, the activities that we performed. Now I pass on to Federica, who is going to uh, present us the uh, research agenda. Yes, and um, thank you, Len. Uh, thank you, Lorenzo, for uh, introducing the, the webinar, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining, so good afternoon. And uh, so I'm going to present in the next minutes, I'm going to present you uh, the research findings and the knowledge gaps that we identified in the topic of health inequalities. And also as the seminar going, as this presentation go goes on, I will also give you some other insights uh, related more to the recommendations that we developed. So to start with, um, with the findings, uh, the findings that we produced are based on the analysis and of different empirical data, uh, which benefited from uh, the collaboration that we had with uh, national researchers. So, one for each of the country that were included in the, in our in our project, we have we had a researcher working uh, to collect specifically uh, some data uh, from the country. 
and more specifically, one work package was dedicated to uh, the mapping of policies and civil society organization initiatives, which allowed to understand better uh, the impact of the responses uh, to the pandemic in within specific communities. Another work package was uh, based on uh, was dedicated to the secondary analysis of European level uh, data, which allowed us to perform uh, more detailed analysis uh, regarding specific vulnerable groups. And last but not least, we had a work package dedicated to a uh, collection and analysis of uh, workshops and interviews with experts, as Ellen was mentioning before, and narratives from members of the vulnerable groups, which provided us more uh, insight into individual experiences, which went beyond what the simple numbers can tell us. So the project adopted a gender plus approach. Uh, what does this um, approach mean? So it means that we looked at the intersection of gender inequalities with other inequalities. For example, inequalities due to age or socioeconomic status, disability, ethnicity, or sexuality. And more specifically, we investigated inequalities looking at the intersection of determinants of health and well-being. So here you can see on the left-hand side of the slides uh, a graphical representation of, of this approach uh, in which we have, we see that there are uh, three areas that are intersect with each other. So on the one hand, we have an area uh, related to social position and living conditions uh, another area related to the sphere of gender, sex, and sexuality. And then we have another area more related to uh, those kind of contextual characteristics, uh, such as work, opportunities, and welfare. And all these three areas uh, interact, inter interact with each other and intersect uh, to shape individuals' experience experiences and well-being. So this was the methodology that Resistire adopted uh, throughout uh, the research and uh, the research uh, path. So what we found in relation to health inequalities, which is the topic of uh, today's webinar. So it was widely acknowledged that uh, there was an increase in, the me in mental health issues during the pandemic, uh, for example, depression and anxiety. And this impact was stronger among certain groups. For example, uh, young people suffered more from uh, mental health issues. But also we, uh, we saw um, an intersection of two different phenomena. So on the one hand, there was an increase in the, the request of support for mental health. And on the other hand, there was uh, a limited uh, offer of this uh, mental health support. And also we saw that there was a problematic access in mental health care even before the crisis. So in Europe, there is a problem in, in accessing mental health care. But during the pandemic, another problem was that uh, those um, healthcare treatment, were, which were defined as non-urgent, were postponed or reduced. And so what we, find, what we found in our research was that groups with intersecting inequalities faced more barriers than others in accessing healthcare. And so, for example, we can think about uh, groups uh, such as, um, for instance, trans healthcare was, uh, was a major problem during the pandemic and accessing the services related to this kind of healthcare. So another area that we, uh, as research res resistire project, found uh, increasing inequalities was access to preventive resources for physical and mental health. For example, we can think about access accessing green areas or healthy food, uh, which were uh, very problematic during the pandemic. For instance, when we thought about when we think about the limitation that we had during um, during the pandemic to to go out, uh, green areas were really important. But the access to this green area was uh, was unequal. For example, we think about uh, a marginalized neighborhood which had uh, less um, less uh, possibility to access these green areas, and so we saw that there were in uh, social class and inter intersection with other inequality grounds were primary source of in, uh, unequal access. So, for example, uh, women living in uh, in uh, rural areas. And 
resistire also found that the civil society organizations uh, were the response to the pandemic of civil society organizations were, was really important because they were able to respond to the needs of this of particular social groups because they are in fact uh, working with these groups uh, on a daily basis and also what we found was that uh, we have seen that online health services were a valid alternative to face-to-face -face services, which were not available during the pandemic, of course. But then uh, there was there were we also observed inequalities in accessing these digital services. So, although the project was not focused on health inequalities originally. We investigated several domains, which are socioeconomic determinants of health. And those domains were uh, gender and sex, employment, income, housing, uh, living conditions, and access to services. So uh, because of the importance of the, the importance of these uh, domains and their impact on the well-being of individuals, we included health inequalities uh, throughout the project and specifically in uh, several outcomes. So um, two research agendas for future work included health inequalities as, uh, as a topic and also uh, three recommendations which are uh, which has been have been published in the form of fact sheets as Len was mentioning before the recommendation. Uh, they are, so those recommendations that included health inequalities focused on uh, healthcare access, so mental health during time of crisis, and monitoring of well-being of the hard to reach uh, group in time, groups in times of crisis. And specifically in uh, today's webinar, we will look at, um, at three uh, outcomes among the different outcomes that I just mentioned. Um, one being uh, the research agenda of cycle two, um, which uh, which included uh, some um, knowledge gap related to data. The research agenda of cycle three, which included the topic of health inequalities, as I mentioned before, and then the third uh, outcomes that we uh, we will we will see in today's presentation is uh, the fact sheet on more intersectional data. So all the outcomes that I just mentioned, including also the other research agenda and the other um, 20, I think, or 21 fact sheets that we had, uh, we had produced during the during our uh, whole project, are available on our uh, website, and I invite you to have a look at them if you want to know more on this topic. So now I'm going to uh, give you some insights on the research agenda on health inequalities and the recommendation related to, uh, to more intersectional data that we developed. So from the from the in the resist, the resistire agenda that we produced were really rich and uh, as I said I mean included different topics so not only health inequalities but uh, today I would like to invite you to have a look at some of the questions that we developed in this specific topic related to health inequalities and uh, access to healthcare. So for example some of the questions that uh, that came out so that would need more so that we uh, suggest as a starting point for future research are, for example, uh, if there are special measures needed to ensure the continuation of healthcare services uh, among vulnerable groups during crisis, but also what we have learned from the pandemic in relation to addressing mental health status during crisis. And, uh, uh, one of the question, one of the the, the most uh, impactful output that uh, came out from Resistire was about the importance of local society, uh, civil society organizations. And so we would, one of the questions that we developed uh, relates to the impact that these civil society organizations have in making preventive resources available for groups in need during the crisis. And also related to the context, uh, we suggest that more research should be done in terms of understanding whether welfare regimes or countries have produced better outcomes in terms of healthcare access. And in relation to uh, intersectionality and intersectional analysis, uh, that is the methodology that we use in the project, uh, 
we have some questions related to how can we better integrate um, data sets to enable intersectional analysis, but for other, uh, what, what methodologies can be used to collect data on more sensitive topics such as uh, gender-based violence. And for instance, uh, what measures should be used to collect comparable data on sexuality and gender identity at the European level. And in relation to this uh, topic, so the last topic that I just mentioned, intersectional analysis, so to be able to adopt a gender plus approach, which is the approach used uh, in Resistire, we should have more accurate data on the European population. So European survey already, uh, European surveys are already comprehensive and provide a large number of indicators to, to analyze. But at the same time, they lack of uh, detail, uh, lack detailed social demographic data. So we encountered some obstacles uh, in, uh, in during our research in order to, to, to perform this intersectional analysis, which is the focus of the project. And because data are um, data on sexuality and gender remain largely lacking across large scale European surveys, they leave behind a significant part of the population. So, for example, uh, we used uh, a data source, uh, which is the Europe, U UCILC, European Survey on Income and Living Condition. So this survey collects data on migration background. They are quite detailed but they lack of uh, detailed uh, data on gender and sexuality that we would need to perform the intersectional analysis. And so, for example, gender is collected, but is as, as a bina binary variable, so only male or female. And in our research, we used other um, European survey data. For example, Euro found living, working and condition and uh, living, working and COVID-19 uh, data set, which was collected during the pandemic. And included this data set, for instance, included uh, a more detailed categories for for gender, but at the same time, it lacks of detailed information on migration status. So we can see that there are um, so European surveys collect data, social demographic data, but not as detailed as it, they, it would be needed for uh, to perform an intersectional analysis. And as a consequence, lack of diversity in European statistics make the experience of most uh, the most vulnerable group largely unobservable and making also research and policies less reactive to the needs of the whole population. Um, so as a consequence, um, because the, the limitation of the European data sets, uh, we, would, we were able to develop a set of possible recommendations which can improve the ability and access accessibility to intersectional analysis. So I'm going to give you some of the rec some examples of the recommendations that we suggest we developed and we are suggesting. Um, so one is develop a common uh, European framework for the collection of social demographic data. Uh, second one is uh, to collect and report data on sex and gender identity identity in a systematic way. The third one is to provide harmonized indicator that can be used by researchers to analyze inequalities at the European level. And the third one is promote intersectional analysis within your official European statistic, which would allow to facilitate a better understanding of the cumul cumulative disadvantages experienced by vulnerable groups and would encourage researchers to conduct similar analysis. And the last one uh, is to promote, strengthen and innovate the use of statistical disclosure control at the wider European level. So the system, this system, uh, it's a system that ensures the data protection of every survey respondent and anonymity in their answer. And it gives data providers control over uh, who has access to this sensitive data. So these are just some of the recommendations that are included in the fact sheet that I, I mentioned before on more intersectional analysis, intersectional data and analysis. So I would invite you to, to have a look at the, the, the fact sheets so you can find more information on this recommendation. 
Um, so for my presentation, it's all, and thank you for listening. And I invite you to also have, as I said, a look at not only our website, but also our uh, Twitter and LinkedIn page, which uh, contains uh, many information and infographics on uh, this topic that I just presented. Super. Federica, thank you so much for for that presentation. I think that um, uh, uh, I'll transition through uh, a reaction to of our invited panelists also to introduce kind of the idea of these webinars. As in that um, Resistory uh, developed over, uh, over these uh, um, uh, months as uh, um, and with the production of new research and new um, uh, results from our own work, um, uh, sort of ignited or fueled the uh, research cycle afterwards. And uh, this happened three times. And uh, now that we're at the end of the research cycle, of course, the questions uh, that uh, have come up from our research are not over. And uh, uh, the idea of this webinar is sort of uh, uh, of finding a way of, uh, uh, on, on one hand, uh, answering these questions and uh, and uh, and finding a way of uh, of uh, of finding new solutions which go beyond the scope of uh, of the project, but of course also to reflect on our work and understand how it can it can be improved and how it could be useful to um, anyone else. So that's really the the idea of this webinar and presenting to you all of these uh, um, um, all of this work that we've done. Uh, over over the last years, which uh, uh, you know, it's uh, kind of melancholic and, and and nice to to look at um, uh, in in retrospect now. And um, uh, I'll also mention that this presentation will be shared, so all of the links that uh, Federica just mentioned uh, will be easily accessible through the presentation. And uh, um, um, before uh, opening it up to the panelists, um, uh, I'll I I, I want to ask if there's any. Clarifications regarding resistor in, in 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 particular, or the work that we did, and uh, of course, I also remind everybody uh, the, that's participating that um, there's be there'll be question and answers at the end of uh, of the webinar, and you'll you know you'll have a, a chance to ask whatever you want um, afterwards. Um, I I also asked if there's questions. I have no idea how to check if there's questions. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, Claire and, and Vazia, I, I remain, I, I recall to you uh, to to let me know whether anyone has raised their hands or uh, or is shouting anything. Okay. Otherwise, um, I'll give a very quick um, uh, introduction of uh, of our panelists, but I'll then let let them introduce their work and uh, their institutions themselves. Um, uh, the, the two people that that will be um, well, uh, joining us today are uh, Raffaella Bicciardini, who since uh, 1992 has been working uh, as a researcher at the uh, Istituto Superiore di Sanità, which is uh, the Italian National Institute of Health, or the Italian Cienciano from some points of view, which uh, uh, is a nice uh, um, way of explaining it. And uh, since uh, 2018, uh, has been the director of uh, the Operational Unit on Health Inequalities. Uh, at, the I, uh, at the ISS. And then uh, we he we'll hear from Aziz Naji, who um, works at Belspo, which is the Federal Public uh, Planning Service, ser um, uh, service for Science Policy in Belgium. And uh, he is an economist and political scientist and the co coordinator of the unit on research programs, which have a focus on societal change uh, at, Belgium, uh, at Belgium federal level. So it's mainly focused on uh, social sciences. And um, Rafaela, Aziz, I, I, I welcome you uh, to, to the conversation and uh, uh, let you give uh, a presentation on, on your work and as well as, uh, um, um, as any first reactions that you'd like to share uh, on the presentation that Federica just gave. Uh, and then we'll jump into a couple of questions that we've uh, prepared for you and uh, you'll, have a chance to, you'll have a chance to chat a little bit. Um, so I, I go in order of the, of the, of the people that I kind of see in my screen. So Aziz, I see you, uh, right on my right. So if you have any, uh, first reactions and if you give a quick. Okay. I thought it was but... ladies first, but I'll, 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 I'll jump in. Sorry, Federica, Rafaela. <laughs> um, okay. I'm Aziz Nagy. I work at Belspo. Belspo is a research funding, 
organization at federal level. We are a federal administration. We are not a classical science foundation that's more in the hands of the communities. You know them well in Belgium is FWO and uh, FNRS. And we fund research with a specific focus on delivering valuable input and expertise for the federal level. So um, it means we are in, in funding focused research. There is an output that is necessary in, in the research that we fund. We do not do it solely for the academic advancements uh, and prestige. We also do it because it can help the federal administrations and its government to prepare better legislations and policies and be aware of existing trends that need to, to be accounted for. Um, that's a brief presentation of my own. I have followed, uh, for the record, I have followed the whole evolution of health inequalities in the various programs that we have funded and the way the concept has evolved from being mostly in the beginning socioeconomic inequalities I think that was the focus of research and Rana, you participated in that consortium a long time ago, I think. And it evolved um, slowly but surely to peak, uh, to peak in what Registry is doing is, is really to look the intersection of as many possible determinants of health inequalities as, uh, as possible, age, gender, sexual orientation, uh, migration background, race, um, or ethnicity and stuff like that. So I think it's it's really um, a huge achievement and uh, a sort of peak in the way health inequalities are conceived today. Thank you. Super. And uh, Rafaela, please. Oh, yes. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for inviting me in this very important uh, and super your results of your essay. Resister or resister eh, the pronunciation of your project? It, it varies, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, let me know if you think that it's, uh, it's better to follow the, uh, um, some question mm -hmm. so in this way i can answer you in more specific way or you prefer that i speak in general what we are doing or my my thoughts about the health and equality challenge let me know what you prefer uh, Lorenzo. yeah for now just uh, just uh, an introduction of what the ISS does so where you work and uh, if you have any first uh, reactions to to resist today then we'll We'll ease into uh, a, a more a panel discussion and uh, more structured questions. Okay. So just, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yes, in ISS, uh, we have been uh, um, decided to do in the in, 2000, in 2018 a specific uh, unit uh, is a cross uh, sectional unit. That means that the different uh, researchers. Uh, that come from different backgrounds and expertise work together uh, on uh, health inequalities projects. Uh, we have a different projects, uh, both at the national level and a lot of international level. So according to the specific project, is my task to put together the different expertise and working together. So uh, at the, during this webinar, I can present to you uh, two uh, important projects. One uh, has ended uh, last year and the one is going to start. And a very important project because it involves a lot of the countries. So I can explain more about this project if you want at the, at the, at the end of this webinar. Super, fantastic. Thank, thank you, Lorenz. No, thank you, and thank you for this for the two of you of, of, for joining us. Um, you know, I'm, I'm personally I'm quite excited. I'm uh, I'm I'm happy to to talk about uh, these things and uh, and uh, and to sort of have this um, you know this uh, this results that we have at our hand that we never really quite had before the end of 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 the project as from the point of view of resistance. So we kind of been able to gather everything we've that we've got now and uh, and to talk about it and. 
and uh, I think that's that's great, honestly. Um, uh, uh, a fantastic outcome of, of what we've done. So well, I'll, I'll um, I think that I'll pick up exactly from what you just said, Rafaela, and of this work uh, related to this cross-sectional unit uh, at ISS that's doing work on health inequalities. Uh, because as, as Federica mentioned before, um, health inequalities were not an outcome that we initially necessarily investigated. So we investigated um, um, what are determinants of health and what are determinants of inequalities, but never um, what these uh, uh, inequalities were doing to the health and well-being of people. And uh, that really came into focus at the end of uh, of our of our project because uh, um, in some ways it became so so important and so central in in the work that we were doing from the quantitative um, uh, analysis point of view that we sort of could not um, 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 let it behind. Um, uh, but we 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 had a limited um, availability to the work that we could do, and uh, in some ways, this limitations uh, from the time constraints of the fact that you know there's a research cycle that one has to follow, and therefore cannot possibly investigate everything that can be done. And at the same time, because of the um, um, limitation that we found at some point, from some point of view, at, at, at data analysis, um, uh, some of the most prominent questions that came up were related to how to improve this type of, uh, of, uh, of analysis, so this type of intersectional work um, uh, from both uh, the institutional point of view as well as the um, uh, data framework point of view. So the first question that I have to you is uh, uh, with thinking of your position within the ISS that you just described and this cross-sectional unit work that you've done. Um, uh, have you, what have you found to be the main challenges in uh, running intersectional analysis at national level um, uh, and in partnership with other countries in Europe? Um, is it my floor or are this? Yeah, yours. Ah, okay, uh, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, we should focus on uh, one important topic uh, that is the health equity in all policies. Uh, we know, uh, as, as you know, from scientific evidence that health depends only in part of availability of health service, uh, but mainly depends on the role of the other policies in other not health sector. I mean, development, poverty, so school, education, social protection, security. And this important fact was also um, highlighted during the, the COVID-19, uh, the importance of health equity in all policy has been clear showed during the pandemic. Uh, in this context, uh, the collaboration between all health and non-health stakeholders is essential in, uh, and this also represents our main challenge. Uh, and for this reason, we decide to put together uh, different research uh, from different skills, because in this way, uh, we have the opportunity to involve all stakeholders uh, who have a role all, uh, also in non-health sectors. Domain. And uh, for us, uh, uh, I think that is the main challenge is uh, find a strict collaboration between health uh, and non health sectors. Super. Wonderful. I, uh, and, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, um, uh, health in all policy, which uh, uh, also, I, I also speak from the point of view of, uh, of uh, the Institute of Health Equity of, of UCL, which has been uh, uh, very forward in in proposing this work, uh, as I I know you you know, and uh, you know it's interesting because uh, Resistere from some points of, from from various points of view did tr did expand the idea of health in all policies without really uh, ever um, um, calling it health in all policy, but uh, um, but uh, that's a, a very interesting uh, uh, point of view on on the on the challenge of finding collaborations, and I think that transitions well to um, a question that I would like to ask to Aziz. Uh, which is um, the obstacles uh, which uh, you have found in funding projects which are related to intersectional analysis. And uh, um, um, in your experience uh, within Bellspo, uh, what have been the biggest challenges um, uh, in, in kind of pursuing this kind of work? Uh, also, uh, taking from the point of view that you've seen the evolution of uh, what we mean with uh, health inequalities 
um, uh, at federal level, but uh, inevitably also at European level. Yeah. Um, I also participated in a in a kind of um, internal process together with Unia, who was trying to 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 pick up intersectional data. Uh, in Belgium, and they stumbled against the same limitations. Uh, sometimes you have gender, but not migration. Sometimes you have the opposite, and you you, you can't really find a source where everything is available. Um, and it's also due to the fact that uh, there is kind of a, a, a need for the sector of data providers uh, at scientific level, but also at uh, administrative level or at um, uh, big data, official data providers to clearly understand the edge that an intersectional analysis will provide. Uh, I, I, for example, have been going through the documents of Registre, but what does that mean in terms of inequalities? If you combine all these dimensions, as opposed to when you don't and you only take, for example, gender, huh? what added value does that bring? And how deep can the inequalities be examined when, when, when you, you add this value to? And if you make that kind of case, I think you can easily, or, or with more ease, convince in the first in the instance, scientific providers of data. And I think that maybe you should, you, you have been looking at official European data, but I don't know how far you have been looking at, um, uh, uh, data from the ESFRI um, uh, adventure, the, the, uh, the so-called European research infrastructures. And I think in particular to share uh, the survey on uh, health, aging, retirement in Europe, which, uh, in which all member states participate, 27 where every two years, the same group of people in a panel vision of 50 plus are interrogated. And they will, they are scientists and they can listen to a scientific argument that is provided to them in the sense that, and they are more open to adding new dimensions and enabling to, to cut across in the analysis uh, and in the way to, to anonymize data. Um, for official producers, I think it's going to be a long way, but we'll, be, we'll go there uh, at some point. But the case to be made, I think, in, 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 in this project would be to pinpoint exactly what the added value is to, 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 to add new dimensions in, in the analysis rather than to stick to the classical male-female uh, division of data. I think that's a, a consideration. I don't know if anyone in the, in the panel would like to, uh, to, to comment on this. Rafaela, yeah, if you have a, a comment uh, directly to, to this, I'm, uh, I'm happy to, uh, to let you comment uh, straight away. No, I think I am aligned with uh, Aziz, uh, so I think that uh, is, a, is a good uh, point uh, what he mentioned now, yes. Yeah, and uh, I think that's a, a, in many ways a powerful statement. Uh, I, uh, I agree, and um, uh, we 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 worked with shared data. Uh, we tried to, to do uh, analysis with shared data, but uh, uh, as uh, you know, Federica mentioned only two of the examples of the myriad of, of databases that we kind of look through. And uh, in some ways, um, one of the biggest um, uh, challenges that we found was that uh, sometimes um, the choice of data set was more 
related to the type of the um, 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 uh, intersectional analysis that you could do. So the uh, social demographic um, uh, uh, disaggregations that were available rather than uh, the um, actual uh, indicators that we would have liked to analyze. So SHARE, for example, had some um, important indicators re regarding uh, uh, people of uh, uh, that are, uh, I, I believe, either 60 or 65 or older, which were uh, um, um, which was uh, an area of analysis that we were that we were interested in in uh, in developing more, but was lacking some of the um, um, indicators that we would have liked to um, further produce to further to further understand. Mm -hmm. And of course, there is the um, I I absolutely agree with the with with your idea of uh, of having to give an um, uh, an example or uh, in some way explaining what uh, uh, an edge uh, this introduction analysis can give in understanding better um, uh, individuals and uh, constructing better policies and uh, um, um, you know it's uh, it, I uh, it's it's uh, uh, a, a very big plus that projects like Resistor A can exist in a time frame that is limited and they are able to uh, in some way push forward this work in in from from some aspects but also uh, the finality of the, of this work is uh, is also its its limitations the fact that in some ways we'll have to end this work and we'll have to move forward uh, mm -hmm. the the legacy of or the, the the results that we used in order to uh, really achieve some change and uh, um, um, I think uh, yeah, did, uh, as a as a transition to this uh, to this idea, um, I'd ask to the both of you, uh, starting with Rafaela, um, what we what you think uh, we could do to further advance uh, the research agenda that we just proposed, and uh, um, uh, how we can uh, uh, improve in some ways the um, um, the idea that Aziz just uh, just mentioned. Okay, thank you. Ken, thank you. Uh, I, I would like to uh, to speak with you uh, about one important of you that uh, as Italian we are going to start. Uh, maybe you know uh, Michael Marmot. And uh, I, I would like to, to mention uh, milestones regarding the health equity uh, uh, that uh, is the Marmot Review published in 2010. And uh, in this Marmot review, Marmot ident identified six main domains of recommendation to tackle health inequalities. And uh, what uh, uh, the very important thing that all these recommendations were implemented, not at national level, uh, like, uh, like Italian, for example, uh, but locally. And uh, thanks to this fact, uh, a networking of uh, Marmot cities were born. And now uh, in Italy, uh, we are trying to establish an uh, health uh, and equity Italian networking of Italian cities like the Marmon cities, uh, that uh, uh, together we can carry out action at the local level. Uh, it is uh, very important uh, because uh, this networking will give us uh, a more visibility, both at local and the national level. Um, working at the local level means uh, involves uh, local government, health and care services, the voluntary, other public sectors. And in this way, uh, we have the concrete possibilities to work on health inequalities. And what uh, we would like to do uh, together, uh, Michael Marmot, um, because I am in contact with him and we have been working for a lot of years, um, is uh, that it would be fantastic to have many Marmot cities in all uh, European countries. Uh, it would allow us to share back practices and have a more incisive role in tackling health inequalities, both at national and European level. So uh, what I, I would like to suggest to you uh, to think uh, about, uh, about this point, because it could be uh, take consideration not only in England and Italy, but also in other European uh, contexts. 
and um, about uh, what uh, I think that uh, as a resistor uh, you can do, for example, uh, is uh, to think about the long term outcomes. Uh, because if it's possible, because you mentioned before some important uh, outcomes that maybe uh, you, uh, you obtain during your project. What I feel uh, that I can suggest to you, if possible, to see the long term outcomes. I mean, for example, the non communicable disease, uh, because I think that maybe uh, they will have a very important impact many due to the COVID-19 in, in uh, vulnerable groups. So I suggest to you, uh, if possible, to follow the, this point. Thank you. Super. Um, uh, that's a, uh, uh, thank you very much. I, uh, yeah, the, the long-term objectives are <coughs> I think, always the, one of the hardest challenges that are related to, um, um, to, to work that is limited in the way that we've, uh, We've limited uh, that 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 are developed within uh, uh, the structure of, of Horizon 420 projects and um, Resistory in particular. And um, I also saw that uh, Rana, you had a, a, a question before, so I'll I'll give the floor to you if you want uh, before I, I I move over to Aziz to to answer the question that I asked. In fact, it was just a small comment on what Aziz said uh, before about uh, highlighting the edge of intersectionality. So, in fact, it's true. Uh, often, we we in in the research that is being done on intersectionality, there are the same um, group at risk who are uh, highlighted. So, it's the same young, um, low SES, etc. So, you 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 would think that it would be the same information repeated again and again. However, I think what's very interesting in intersectionality is a situation where you highlight groups that were under the radar. So there are situations where you have, uh, when you have enough data, um, then you can find, for instance, a group, low income, you know, high income young women who might be more at risk of taking drug, for instance, in the US, and this is a group that you wouldn't have thought about if you didn't look at intersectionality. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the idea what could really be important uh, in addition to all the things that we, we, we see usually. Thank you. I think making visible the invisible under a lens that is too gross uh, is really the challenge of, in, of, of proving a case, I think. Um, exactly, exactly. Making the invisible visible. It's, mm -hmm. it's the way of them saying it, yeah. In reflection to your research agenda, which I read the number three of, um, there are a few things that are striking in, you, you make a case for, no, you, you, you discuss in, in, in many areas and all the people, access to green spaces and, and digitalization, uh, mental health, you discuss the long-term effects, but it does not look like you make a strong case based on scientific evidence for it. It's more, it looks like, but it's maybe a question of presentation. It, it, it looks like curiosity driven agenda at some point uh, for for other points i'm totally convinced that we need it and we we have launched this year a program on on post covid and lessons learned for the for the government and that work plus the work of resistere and the work of other research groups that are outside the program will feed a document uh, as lessons learned for the future government but in, in a sense, the research agenda should be kind of more making a case and substantiating on the basis of scientific argumentations that long-term effects might exist and need to be further researched rather than what are the, just instead of just raising the question, in raising the question, you, you can have the tendency to believe that it's curiosity and you're, you might not be inclined to pick up on the question because it, 
it it's not substantiating substantiated by 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 evidence huh? you, 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 but but maybe it's a question of of presentation another question of presentation to make a stronger case of this research agenda is to kind of put the covid element um uh, in the background, it's a magnifier. Simply, you could have used the uh, the price uh, crisis that when the energy price crisis, uh, any shock to a society results in inequalities, uh, which need to be better underst understood. Um, so, if 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 you confine it to COVID, people would not be tempted to go <laughs> again funding COVID because. We want it behind our back <laughs> and we don't want to reopen that book. But if you present it in a way as COVID, as one example of any shock that, uh, that might result in the inequalities that we list and for which we think further research and specific recommendations for policy are, are needed, then you, you make a stronger case, I think. And for the data, I think it would be good to see the people from the European Social Survey, the, uh, the share people. They have uh, groups of scholars that look into the methodology and, and that look into the questionnaires and how to fit in new questions or transform questions. And I think they would be really open to uh, discuss your level of, of granularity in, in, in the way they conceive their research questions and allow analysis. Super. Uh, that's a fantastic comment. And uh, um, I'll, I'll answer to, uh, to the fact that I, um, I, I think that you, you rightly pointed out that some of the questions that we've, uh, that, that are discussed and, and developed within the research agenda are in some way curiosity driven, and I, um, uh, I don't know if, if the connotation that, that uh, of of uh, of this um, of this um, of this phrasing, but I I see it as uh, as uh, in some ways one of the strength of uh, of the uh, multi dimensional and multi um, uh, disciplinary approach that uh, Resistere has. Then. As now, right now, um, Federica and uh, and myself and and Rana are talking, uh, and uh, we were all uh, very much involved in the quantitative analysis of this work. But that's one of the uh, seven work packages that sort of analyzed um, uh, um, the the crisis and, and inequalities from different perspectives. So there are some questions that are uh, driven by our work and our research, and those uh, um, uh, are found maybe um, more specifically related to. Uh, the work um, uh, that we've done with the data, and there are some that are um, uh, that spark from uh, interviews with uh, people, with uh, from uh, um, work with uh, uh, civil society organizations, and work on the on the ground that um, are I think more curiosity driven mm -hmm. and uh, are more based on the fact that maybe we had some observations that were related to the situation of someone and. Uh, um, um, and just asked uh, generally, oh, maybe uh, you know what 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 happened here, and uh, how can we improve it in some way? Um, um, so I agree, and uh, and uh, um, the ambition and uh, and uh, of of the of the work of Resistere was in some ways the fact that it wanted to be uh, multidisciplinary, that it didn't want to have only a lens um, uh, that was uh, the, the the common lens being the gender plus approach, but this gender plus approach is really morphing into different realities in the moment in which you uh, look at qualitative work or quantitative work. Okay, can I pick up on this discussion? And, and Rafaela, I will link it to a question to you. I've seen a comment from Marielle Smits, which I, I say hello to, uh, who, who, who pinpoints indeed that intersectionality um, might have something to do with the environment as such, as, as a whole. We have looked at green spaces and the access to green spaces and inequalities in there, but the environmental pressure in times of climate change might just be more than that. And, and beyond uh, sexual orientation, access to employment, social services, uh, household elements, 
and 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 things like that the environment needs some kind of um philosophical or theoretical thinking on the way it pressures people differently um which which is something we strongly believe in i think the ipcc reports point in that direction but intersectionality accounting for a dimension that is environmental uh would be um a good way forward and i don't know rafael if if in your uh, unit you 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 kind of integrate that that uh, uh, that dimension okay I, I i would like to be concrete i would like to suggest one important thing that as a unit we have, uh, we have been done for some years i think that at this point it is very important to share your outcome if it's possible for you at political level I, I think that you should consider this as an outcome of your project. Because if you don't involve in this context, the political level, it's very difficult that we can have what we need. I mean, uh, sectional data, uh, the, 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 the possibility to use the data. For example, in Italy, as you may know, we have different institutions that have different data, ISTAT and Ministero della Salute. So, uh, every, uh, we, we, uh, we can work together with specific projects involving all of them. But what is very necessary, as a, for my experience, is the key, is the involvement on the police level. Because in this way, the door can be open. And for this reason that we are working now at the local level is easier. But uh, for us, it's very important because we can uh, have some important data. As I mentioned before, health and all policies. So what I suggest in my experience as Italian uh, researchers and working in a European courses, I try to do this, the involvement on a local level. And to answer your answer, as is, uh, I, I, I can overlap this problem when I involve all different stakeholders. Because if the stakeholders are in the project, they want to collaborate. And so the door will open. It is, is a, for my experience, only in this way I can have all different data that I need together. Uh, but um, I, I, I would like in this webinar to, to suggest you again to think the possibility to create a, network, a networking uh, in each country, work together. Because in this way, we can have the possibility to set up a European networking. In this way, we can more visibilities. And so we can involve the political decision and we can uh, destruction uh, because what we need is some uh, very important culture transformation. And uh, you can do it if you involve them in the, in the project and the pathway. Mm -hmm. This is uh, my point of view. I don't know if the, the audience what thinks about, uh, about this point. I would like to, to share with you your idea regarding this point. I mean... I, um, uh, I'll, I'll navigate through a couple of, of things that have been mentioned in the last couple of minutes quickly. Uh, from one thing, uh, Maria has, uh, has asked uh, this link with environmental inequalities and, uh, um, and mentioned the Budapest um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, meeting at the WHO. And uh, this um, also kind of opens up the Pandora box of how complicated it is to uh, assess health inequalities from an environmental perspective. And uh, we tried to do this and uh, we worked with, uh, um, uh, we even worked with uh, local institutions in order to develop ideas that were um, um, trying to, in some way, curb inequalities at environmental level um, uh, throughout the project of Resistor Aid. These are uh, some findings that are found in our website under the ecosystems of care um, heading um, and uh, and it they're they're incredibly important. I think uh, they came out as to be one of the most uh, um, uh, uh, one of the most central um, uh, 
um, determinants of well-being of people throughout the, the, the pandemic, using the pandemic right now as a context, but of course then decontextualizing it from that and more generally access to green spaces and, uh, and, uh, and the environment that's around you uh, really affect the way they live. Uh, but it's also so hard and, uh, and and very complicated to 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 analyze. And uh, of course, the time constraints and the and the reality of uh, of a project that has uh, uh, so many objectives ends up being the fact that we we kind of like nudged at it and uh, and uh, hope that uh, you know conversations like this can happen because because of this nudging and 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 yeah and the and of course what um, uh, Rafaela just mentioned, about the the creation of uh, of uh, of net that work on this and uh, uh, political engagement uh, related to this is uh, is sent and uh, um, uh, is related to um, um, resistere was uh, in hope of of creating this uh, this engagement and uh, it happened in uh, um, uh, in some ways but of course uh, I think. Uh, that uh, uh, as everyone that's participating here knows, it's uh, it's very hard. Uh, it's hard to uh, catch the um, uh, interest and the um, um, it, the interest of political agendas. It's uh, it's complicated to create to simplify complex ideas into uh, something that can be described into concrete policies. And uh, um, uh, I've, I've, for me, these are some of the most exciting challenges that are related to this kind of work. But it's also challenges, and and they're very concrete. Um, uh, which uh, research can uh, help in in uh, in um, in changing, but um, but it's low end. Uh, and the idea, of course, of a network that could do this, um, similar to the Marmot Cities, uh, which I'm uh, um, very familiar with, uh, would be you know uh, fantastic. And uh, and perhaps in some ways, uh, uh, the work that Resist Ray did can help uh, um, uh, bridge this idea. And um, um, I want to give. Uh, I want to ask you just another couple of questions, and then I also want to leave some time for, for anyone in the audience to ask um, uh, some things. And uh, uh, the first thing that I would like to ask, um, maybe um, 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 Rafaela, and uh, and since we've uh, kind of dealt into the idea of uh, of of uh, institutions, policies, and bureaucracy, is the idea of data bureaucracy. Which I use um, uh, Italy as, as a great example that you mentioned before of the um, location of data um, in different institutions and the uh, difficulty of this institution to sometimes meet and collaborate and and talk to one another in order to advance this type of work. And I wanted to know from you um, um, what are some solutions to overcome kind of these data limitations? How to overcome the bureaucratic um, um, uh, uh, slowdown that sometimes uh, research hits, and uh, we've hit this this wall uh, multiple times because the availability of the work that we had, uh, the, of the data that we had, was um, intrinsically related to the fact that there was something that was hindering. Um, um, uh, the, the the data at national level, and um, yeah, in your experience and uh, working as a you know in an in, in a research institution that is uh, closely in in some ways um, um, uh, related to these other data providers, um, uh, where do you see the solutions in this, and how do you think they can that the, this can be improved in order to uh, push forward uh, intersectional analysis? Okay. Thank you, Lorenzo. Okay, uh, as I told you before, uh, to obtain more data possible, uh, when we decide to do a specific project, we try to involve all stakeholders. In this way, for the beginning, we know uh, which are our outcome and which stakeholders need to be involved, and we ask for their contribution. As a research institute, we have the possibility to be in contact with the ministry, with uh, uh, the ISTAT, with Janas, with different uh, key institutions uh, that usually we work together. And uh, for this perspective, we have different pilot studies 
uh, that works very well because uh, we succeed in involvement all of these stakeholders. This is usually uh, is the way that we work. But as I told you before, uh, to obtain uh, big visibility and also the opportunity to have the data, and now, for example, in Rome, in these days, uh, we have an agreement between ISS and the municipality of Rome. Because in this way, we are going to work at the local level uh, using the health equity audit and the health equity impact assessment. Uh, um, our, 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 our task is the research task, no? So uh, we, at the beginning, we have the design of the situation. We decide together which action we can implement to tackle health inequalities. We are going to monitor them at the end to evaluate them. At the end of the history, we have the scenario, uh, if the action will work or not, and we are going to provide this information to our local decision makers. This is, is our cycle that, for example, in Roma, we are doing now. But in Italy, there are also different uh, cities that we are working the same way. And for this reason that now we are ready to set up a, a, an Italian equity networking to work at the local level. This is what we are doing now, because in this way, we can uh, the possibility to have the data that we need. And mainly to work, because my, my, my task is working on health equity impact assessment and health equity audit. This is our main task. And this way, we can do it. This is my experience, Lorenzo. <laughs> Fantastic. And that's a that's a wonderful answer. I think that it's uh, less, uh, I think that from a, an outside perspective, sometimes it's it's almost less intuitive, the fact that the the, 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 the answer to this might be uh, this uh, work with more local authorities. And uh, uh, that's wonderful. It, it you know, it's, um, uh, it really is, uh, in some ways, um, yeah, a solution that I that I wasn't expecting from uh, from as an answer. So that's a uh, uh, that's great. And uh, um... for example, I would like to give you another example. Uh, now is going to start at the beginning of the next year. Very important joint action on cancer and uncommunicable disease. And uh, I am a working leader of work package on health inequalities. And uh, we are uh, planning to do different pilots. In one of these pilots, I am involved with the, the municipality of Rome. So I involve the municipality of Rome in a European project. For example, uh, yeah, this yeah, is... The, the, re, the, the local reality that you can create within also a European project that can help in push forward uh, this idea of uh, of uh, of data availability is uh, I think it you know it's innovative from from many ways and uh, Resistere did work with uh, with uh, with local with the local context in in its experience uh, and uh, uh, yeah it's it's just great to to hear that uh, that is a is a is a concrete example of uh, what could be done. So, sorry, I just want to interrupt because I know, Lorenzo, you're not seeing my hand. Um, just quickly to say that what we have done and what we have found in uh, Resistere really um, is in parallel to what Rafaela is saying. This is a project was on the European level, and we really were interested in European data and uh, everything European. However, one of the main findings was that the importance of the work of local organizations and one of our pilot projects that were the most interesting was about the uh, ecosystem of care that really is putting all stakeholders around of one problem uh, in, a, in a specific municipality and working on it together. So I think it's really, really reflect the importance of the local level as well. Uh, yes, uh, but for example, uh, we uh, I was coordinator of the past joint action, Jai, I don't know if you know uh, joint action health equity Europe. And uh, for example, in one of the work packages, uh, work package six, uh, 
uh, we work a lot at the municipal level and it depends on countries because some countries are needs a lot of help some countries uh, are a good level so uh, it's a depend on the level ma, but the project uh, are useful also for this to share back practices uh, and I, I for example in joint action Jai was in joint action uh, we did some recommendation this recommendation was shared with all countries and with the policy policy makers and I think that a step forward was reached also for the country that uh, started with low level of health inequalities at governance level, for example. So I, I think that we should work at a local level, but in international level, both, and sharing the best practices. Super. That's my experience. Great, yeah. A great point to, to take away from this, absolutely. Um, um... Uh, a fantastic example. Um, yeah, uh, Aziz, do you, um, uh, I think that that transitions well is also of the, on, on the type of work that you've done. So uh, I think that uh, if you have any reactions directly related to this idea of uh, uh, contextualizing and uh, involving the local level at a more uh, intersectional and uh, a more international level. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it's like for any new scientific dimension, to, to to diffuse into bureaucracy it's a long process uh, and look at gender it took many many years before finally everyone's agreed on the concept and the necessity to have it and and now uh, or climate change it took how many cops before <laughs> before the, the 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 idea diffused in the general public and and politicians to a lesser extent so it's a, it's a process it's a process in many ways. It's a scientific process because I think you also need to talk to scientific communities that might not be acquainted to the, to, with the concept to see how powerful the analysis can become when, when you impute uh, additional dimensions in the, in the, in the thing. Um, so at scientific level, it's important. And it's important also for research funding organizations such as mine, where the concept starts to exist, the name is circulating, but we really don't know how to concretely impute that in our research goals. Uh, how can we can invite research teams to adopt such a perspective so, so again, like Rafaela said, you need to involve politicians. And if we are politicians, then we would like to be involved in, in some form of, of um, knowledge sharing uh, on, on that part. Um, and, and so the scientific community, research funding organizations, local level and involvement, as Rafaela said, is, is key. Uh, if you involve, you then really see on the field what it what it happens when you when you go that route. <clears throat> and it might be at the top level, at the, the bottom level, at municipality, at, at, the, at the level of a federal ministry whatever, but you need to make a, a strong case uh, and, and long discussions before you can be convincing. Don't, it's frustrating, but, it, but it's, that's the way it works. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah? bureaucracy is like a sleeping dog. You kick it, you kick it, and eventually one day you will, you will wake up. Good, yeah, good analogy and good and, uh, and, uh, and, and fantastic point. And, uh, I think that I, I I see that you both are talking from some point of experience and some point of the, of give a, a reference in in uh, or uh, in in your head of 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 projects that have done this. So um, I I'm also very happy to welcome you to present of any work that you um, uh, think that have uh, that have achieved this uh, this type of work that have done um, um, steps forward in uh, in, um, in in advancing. Uh, intersectional analysis or um, anything that you'd be interested in in, in presenting as as good examples. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Rafaela, you mentioned the joint action on uh, uh, health inequalities in uh, Europe, which uh, uh, was a, a very big project. And, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, please. Uh, uh, yes, th- um, thanks, yeah. Lorenzo. Uh, yeah. Yes, I mentioned before Jai. Jai was a very important project. Uh, 24 countries, European countries, were involved uh, with, as I told you before, different level uh, on um, awareness, I will say, on health inequalities. And what uh, uh, the main outcome, I can say now that uh, is uh, we have a ton of recommendation, but we, we have also the website, if you have more information about this, you can find a lot of deliverables and milestones that we produce during the GE. Uh, but this recommendation was useful for us uh, to enter in contact with police decision makers, because uh, uh, in our opinion as ISS, we think that our research our results are important if they can be used. Because otherwise it's only publication. And it's okay for for research, for a scientific level, but for us that we have public health research and we will strict contact with Minister of Health, is very important that each action uh, or also law can be based on a scientific evidence. So uh, what JAI help has it is to improve uh, the governance uh, awareness of health inequalities. And for us, it was very important. Now, uh, I would like to, uh, to tell you about another important joint action, as I told you before, is regarding the cancer and non-communicable disease. We'll start four years. Also, in this case, a lot of uh, European countries are involved, uh, if I remember well, 2025. Uh, this joint action will start on February of the next year. And uh, the focus is on cancer non-communicable disease uh, with uh, the the point, uh, the key points are social determinants. So we have uh, um, a work package that will work on health inequalities with different pilots. Uh, So I I think also that this joint action can be very useful for these different level. And uh, we are our, responsibility to share the main results also during the joint action with the the audience because a lot of deliverables and milestones will be public so we will we will have the way to to share this information Uh, and i think also this joint action can be very very useful both at the national level and uh, international european level i I don't think i got the, the name of this joint action that you just mentioned and um, uh, joint action prevent CD. Jahi prevent CD. Prevent CD. Okay. Yeah. Super. But if Thank I you. want, I can I can provide you additional information on the joint action. If Absolutely. You sounds, yeah, yeah. No, it sounds like an, an exciting project to to look forward to. So uh, yes, it's a very it's a very big, 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 big joint action with a lot of resources, both financially and uh, human. Yeah. And uh, and Aziz, uh, any do you have any uh, projects that you have in mind that you'd like to? Uh, yeah, there are a few projects, a few attempts that that unfortunately did not succeed very very well at federal level using administrative data from UNIA to try and produce <coughs> intersectional data. There was a methodological guide and recommendations. But in, unfortunately, I don't think that there was any follow-up in this. And and but but it's but it's like I said, kicking the the sleeping dog. That was one kick. You you can provide another kick. And 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 I would really, with the edge that we spoke in the beginning, invite you to go to 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 different levels of government at Belgian and and European level. I think Rafaela told about the joint joint actions funded by DG Santé at European level, I think you should you should knock on their door with your results. Um, 
and 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 see if any joint action between the different Cienzanos in Europe could be could be undertaken to examine that aspect further and try to go from an analysis to a monitoring uh, system. So I, I would urge you to go there. Look at that Belgian level, all these organizations who are doing monitoring of specific groups like social security, employment and social integration have pulled forces to monitor people in the safety net of social security and employment. Uh, it would be good to, and they're using administrative data, it would be good to see how important an, an, an additional level in the analysis would be to, to catch specific subpopulations that are not visible for, to them because they do not have the granularity to, to, to see what, what's mm -hmm. happening below the surface. The same with Institut Egalité Homme Femme. You should, you should knock on their door. I don't know if there is anyone in the assistance that's from that organization, but they can advocate for, for intersectionality as, as a further step in gender equality. Super. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's the, that. Those are, uh, I I think, great points of re reference to to the work that the that hopefully the the results in some way of resistance can do. And uh, and you're you you you're right. You know, it's um, it is. It, I think one of the one of the the biggest results also it at resistance level. It's that it has been challenging to kind of kick. And uh, and uh, and find a way also to knock on the door because it's not as uh, as straightforward sometimes as it seems. Um, uh, so thank you so much. That that was uh, inspiring and incredibly interesting. And uh, um, we have a, a, a couple of minutes, and uh, I wanted to give the opportunity to anyone in the audience to ask any questions. Um, uh, if you do, um, uh, maybe I think Claire, is it best to write them in the chat and and uh, and and. For them to be read out loud, and um, uh, maybe uh, just for uh, good keeping, just to maybe uh, mention who you like to ask the question to, um, make it as simple as possible so it's easy for everyone to understand and and uh, and straightforward for anyone to answer. Um, um, and yeah, but uh, please feel free to to ask anything. <clears throat> or not specifically in the chat huh? you can just uh pop or yeah you can just yeah you can you can just blurp out if if you if you if you prefer absolutely there's no Well, super. That, from some points of view, I think that's uh, that leaves that that means that the, there were no questions left uh, in between. <laughs> or uh, of course, uh, uh, in, uh, you, could, you could you could invite people more directly to 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 react. For example, if I'm a bit naughty, and and I would address Paul Geritz, who was in charge of reforming mental health in Belgium. Um, would you do the same reform now that you've looked at the registry uh, information and that the COVID crisis has passed? Or would you tweak it here and there and, and readjust uh, the general sense of the reform? Yes, to be honest, uh, I, I find the results very general. And I think also, bef also before COVID, we know there is a need on more intersectional data to do on good policies. And it was also, also before the COVID crisis, it was normally that the inequalities will be increased after the crisis because they take only very general policies. Hmm? Mm -hmm. This yes, we have need more intersectional data, but there is also an 
legal framework that make it very difficult to, to collect intersectoral data. And intersectoral data doesn't also mean that people of different sectors and administration should be work more together from the beginning. And that costs time, that costs more time in the beginning. Mm. And that means also more human resources. That, uh, that's a fair point. I, uh, I would counter argue that um, if one also only stops in front of the fact that uh, we already know that there's a problem in intersectional data and it needs more human resources, then the problem is never really addressed in some ways. So yes, absolutely. And uh, uh, the idea of a project that is wide ranging cannot be um, um, to be specific in any of, the, of its results. Uh, but at the same time, one cannot stop in front of the fact that um, uh, the problem is uh, a, a complex uh, and bureaucratic uh, legal structure. Um, uh, because intersectional data and the importance of it has uh, um, not, also, not only been uh, already explored in other countries and shown incredibly important results, uh, but it's also um, a, a hard fact, as in there's no questions that um, uh, social and uh, uh, demographic uh, attributes and situations are uh, affecting people's health and well-being. And therefore, um, uh, if one doesn't push forward, then uh, it uh, never has the opportunity of, uh, of, of changing things. Uh, Maria, I see that you have uh, your hand raised in. I don't know if you, yeah. Yes, thank you. Maybe to complete or to discuss with uh, Aziz about the uh, difficulties and also Paul difficulties about indicators and data for uh, intersectoral. Maybe one in Belgium, one of possibilities is the interfederal service for statistics. Where and uh, where the plan bureau is also busy coordinator because they are work, working on the uh, indicators for the SDGs and the target of the SDGs, where you have a lot of links with health inequalities of health links, and there you have the different institutions as has he sp spoke about UNIA, uh, gender and inequalities uh, center for equality between women and health and men that's maybe one place where we can discuss all this because during the covid-19 all the people working on social economic administration were really quickly organized to have info data, but it's maybe also, uh, we think, I, I'm working for the, the federal uh, administration for health, but also environment, and I'm working on the national plan health and environment. After the COVID or between the COVID, we thought, we thought that with the uh, the plan and the resilience plan, we will, we will speak about everything, but everything is going down, <laughs> the coordination. At the beginning, everything was in the, so resilience and those things, but for the moment, it's going a little down. But I think that a basis of that, and also I think that really, really, it's, it's I, I came back on that, but I think that you can no more uh, no links make between health inequalities and health inequalities. That's no no more possible. We see him in Belgium. We see him everywhere, and it will be it'll be it will be worse and worse. So I think that we have to work together, and that may be the the message that we have to send to our health administration, health colleagues, is to say, to say that you have to have more environment in all of your policy. But in the other hand, I think that in, and I'll see it with my colleagues with environment, that we we have to have more health in our environment, environmental policy. It's quite com complicated. I have 20 new colleagues to work on climate change, but I have an half, 
I have received one and a half time of one people to work on the links between health and climate change. That is not normal. I think biodiversity is the same, nobody. So I think it's it's in, in all the links. And what I say also to my colleagues, because I see it in my administration after COVID-19, everybody is working on new plans, crisis plan, uh, emergency plans. Um, but they are only working on how to react if it's come back, but they are not re working on how can we do it for that no, no more happens. So working on biodiversity, biodiversity crisis, climate change, and dealing with all of that. And I think that it's maybe we have a colleagues, but we have a new now a colleague who is working on specialist in change of behavior. Is working on our communication for the moment. Is working of the IMA communication, so the, uh, the use on antibiotics. But I think that is quite important to change maybe the way we we speak about the the things that for for example for the people working uh, on climate and biodiversity biodiversity loss. If you put the health problematics in in priority, I think that the people will be more. More, it will be more easy for people to understand and to change their behavior and to to respond to these problematics, um, because they are more. It's something that touch them more, so that's just something that uh, I, the one health approach and 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 all those things is really important, and we have to uh, understand and reflect. Uh, I don't know how to do it. Because it's quite more complicated. What was what would you speak about? But the methodology and how to do it. But I think that it's it's really linked. We cannot do the with one without the other. The one without the other. So that was my my reflections. That's a wonderful reflection, and I and I very much agree with the, with everything you said, starting from the fact that. Um, uh, I I agree that um, there has been such a, a strong focus on the idea of uh, what could be done for the next crisis, but there is a there and sometimes seem to lack the idea that from this there needs to be some type of changes that happen um, before another crisis happens in order to not make it as bad um, in the, in a second place. And I agree with you; it's incredibly complex. There's so many things that need to be controlled, but um, the idea of 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 collaboration between different uh, uh, institutions and and between different branches of science, I think, is a uh, is a fantastic uh, um, way of kind of wrapping up this. Uh, this um, this webinar and uh, one of the central ideas and one of the central focuses of of Resistere as well, which it tried to do in uh, in the last years. And uh, uh, with any, uh, if there's no other questions or no other comments, um, thank you very very much, uh, Rafaela. Thank you very much, um, uh, very much, uh, Aziz, and uh, um, to and to everyone that participated and uh, kind of gave their reflections in this uh, panel discussion. Um, um, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I I take the opportunity to also thank all of my colleagues uh, from Resistere, which has been uh, wonderful to work with in the last uh, couple of years. And uh, um, yeah, uh, I think that wraps up the one of the last uh, um, events of uh, our project in uh, a hopeful way and uh, complex and nonetheless, but um, uh, starting to maybe kick the, the bureaucratic dog uh, a little bit more and uh, and hope for it to move forward in, in the future. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.